as a, uh, a, a it's not quite what it should be, but 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 a relatively thick sole, and it's a, in soft terrain, and it's a draft horse, which as we've talked about earlier helps matters. They do better on their soles than say a thoroughbred. So if if I were uh, um, and I'm making a judgment call here, it turns out good. Uh, if if I had rocky terrain, or if I had a thinner sole, or if this was another breed of horse, or if it was showing sensitivity in its environment, I would immediately use be using the the boots, um, the the casting material, or even a, uh, a a pad with tape applied. You can use, but something to protect the sole. So so. Um, very the specific situation that we're able to do it this way. You just need to, to, to continue to re-stress that that that, that 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 actually in most situations outside of draft horses um, I'll end up having to, to protect the soul. Um, and often with draft horses I have to pr protect the soul. Just not this one. He, everything fell in place that I don't have to. Mustang roll, and not so much a roll, but just a huge straight bevel. And that directs, when that hits the ground, it diverts a lot of the energy inside. But whereas pre trim the horse, when it hit the foot hit the ground, it had a separational force on the lamina. Now, when that foot the hits the ground, it'll actually have a squeezing force on the lamina. So, getting that bevel right is essential for growing in well-connected walls on a horse like this. At the crenna, now I'm following the sole, staying about a three-eighths of an inch away from the sole with this roll all the way around. But at the toe, where the coffin bone and the sole dives in through this crenna in the bone, I'm just projecting that around, so I'm not following that um, so in with the wall and just sort of pretending like the crown is not there and rounding out the toe. In addition to our white line separation, we also have the separation I mentioned earlier in the hoof wall itself. Now I'm going to keep everything outside that out of a weight bearing roll. Um, may seem aggressive to, to, to uh, make that totally passive, but think about what this hoof wall out here is gonna do. If that hits the ground, it's just gonna chip break like this one that I already cut off. You can see that's that flap I cut off and it just chipped in that. And so that's gonna separate. And so the only chance that you can ever get to use that part of the hoof wall is if I can grow that separation out. So what I like to do You just put my nipper in there. I'm just gonna relieve it from ground pressure. Now I can do this because I still have good wall thickness. I have enough armor plating that if he kicks a rock, he won't bruise his lamina. If that separation were closer Say if it were a quarter of an inch away from the from the um, from the white line, I would just put a Mustang roll on it, skip this step, and you can grow them out that way. But when you do that, you take a little bit of two steps forward, three steps back usually. And so it's nice when you can come in here like this and just completely relieve it from the ground. Now I'm just continuing to go after that separation. I'm not going to take it all off. My primary goal 
is that it won't is that that outer disconnected shelly hoof wall won't be in ground contact when I come back. A great draft horse trick. Just do a lot of your rasping on the ground. It's not the best thing in the world for a rasp. But rasps are cheap, back surgery is expensive. see where I've brought that to. That's that little shelly layer right there. And again, my only real goal here is that, is that it's not bare enough weight that there's more separational forces by the time I come back. I'm getting molested from every direction. So our future angle we hope to grow is like this. So maybe there you can see just how much toe flaring we have. And so I'm just working the bottom. Um, we could, and a lot of people have taught to do this, go ahead and trim all this off so that that foot looks like there's no separation. But if you did that, you would cut all the way through the hoof wall. And this horse, if it kicked a rock, it would bruise the lamina and then set off worse problems. So by relieving it, by setting up forces at the ground to take away our separational forces, um, hopefully we'll grow that in well connected over time. A much uh, safer, better way to do that. These bars have gotten about a half inch above the sole. We'll trim them down until they're just above the sole plane. This frog is in the middle of a shedding too doesn't seem to have the fungal problems that that front did. Still going to kind of open up the sulcus, and open up these sides of the frog, and hopefully that's what we'll be doing to the front frogs soon.
Well, I had to set him up on the same day I did Milo. <laughs> Milo, good boy. Yeah. So he was long. Yeah, he was real long. I told him you said hello. <laughs> he said who? Yeah, I know. This crack, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you can feel there's a deep groove here that goes, it's actually in the coronet band. It's a coronet injury here, and I think literally a gap in the growth, not so much a crack. Sometimes these things, it may be a weakness in the growth. Um, we may grow that out. Uh, I doubt it though. It just looks, it's really wide even at the top. And it'll probably just be a cosmetic uh, problem for him um, and not cause him any trouble whatsoever but the biggest problem that these will tend to call is that it creates an entry point for fungus that can then spread around the foot so 